Hi there, I am Alejandro Garcia Lopez. I am a senior application engineer at Endopology. And if you're in the orthosis, in the prosthetics, or in the orthotics space, I am sure this video will be very important to you. So if you're uh, designing this type of devices and you're spending hours, days designing them, so from my experience, this can take half a day or a full day sometimes to design this sort of um, orthosis uh, conformal to a specific scan. I'm going to show you how that big amount of time can be reduced to a few minutes with topology and how you can repeat the same workflow over and over again over different uh, patient data in order to scale up your production you're going to be able to, instead of spending five hours doing this, spending 10 minutes on it. So you can make the numbers and, 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 and see how much scalability you can apply to, to your business based on that. Yeah, so I'd like to start by explaining a little bit how this works. So basically we import a, a mesh of a scan that we have done. And then we convert it to our format at topology, which is the volumetric implicit format. So basically, I'm not going to go high into details, deep into details about this, but basically we take any sort of data, whether it's CAD, whether it's a mesh, and we transform it to this implicit volumetric uh, mathematical description. So implicit equations describing the volume and that comes associated with these distance fields that we see on the screen. So why is this important? Because for any data that we bring into the software, we are able to create more geometry around it fully conformally, no matter the complexity of the shape. So that's exactly what we do here in the topology. So you see, we are creating this conformal shape around it. So if I do a cross section here, You see, I am creating this conformal geometry around the scan. And I can do things such as varying the thickness or the distance with respect to it. So I have full control over how this conformality is happening. In this case, I am applying a one millimeter clearance here. If I set this to zero, this clearance will become nothing as you can see now. Of course, I have some more rules varying this thickness across the, the whole scan, but just wanted to give you a quick insight over how this works. Now, in this workflow that I built, I have embedded some different um, geometrical references in order to trim the geometry to make it look like an orthosis to give it the final orthosis shape that it has. So you can see here, they have a bunch of generic uh, geometries that are trimming the shape. And effectively, that's how I obtain this final shape. Also, you might notice that I have added um, some pattern here for perforation in order to give more flexibility to the ankle. You can vary, you know, you can control the, the size of, this, of these holes. You can control, you see, the perforation size or the amount of points. You can control all of these design parameters. Okay, so we have designed this for this specific foot, for this specific scan, but what if we wanted to do the same for a different scan, like this one? So we have built this geometry and scanned it for a different patient with a different problem. And now we want to also create the conformal orthosis around it. So normally that would mean starting from scratch again, right? You would need to start drawing all of your uh, geometry around the, the, the mesh. And, and, and as you know, this would take hours. But in topology, luckily, with this conformal property that I showed you, this is going to be a very fast operation. So all I need to do is to bring foot number two instead of foot number one as a selected mesh. 
And now this workflow is going to do the job for me. However, as per today, this is not a fully automated workflow. It's highly automated because we're using the conformal features. However, we need to play with these different reference geometries to get to the final geometry. So the first time I run the workflow with the previous reference geometries, effectively, I am able to obtain a conformal shape to the new mesh. However, the cutting of the orthosis is not happening correctly because I still haven't modified the reference geometries, right? So now I'm going to do is I'm going to play with those in order to get to my final shape, all right? So, for example, I can see that the shape here is not trimming properly. The, the shape needs some rescaling and some repositioning. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I need to make it longer in the Y direction. So I am going to rescale it, for example, by 1.2 millimeters. Okay. And then I see that maybe I, would, I should move it a little bit more towards the negative y direction. Okay. So I can move it a bit more. Okay. So let's have a look at that. So here's our our scan data. Okay, so that's starting to look much better now. Okay. However, there might still be a few other things that we need to do. So for example, the heel, we're going to move it slightly. Okay. So if we take the heel geometry, what we're going to do here is reposition it a bit more in the X direction and also a bit up to make sure it intersects properly, okay? We were also seeing a bit of a hole in that area. So that's because uh, this is gently touching the, the foot at the back. So I'm going to move it slightly backwards to avoid that problem. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you could reposition these geometries for a few minutes until you're happy with them. And then you'll get to your final part, as we can see on the screen. You can as well uh, modify the geometry that is determining where these holes are placed. As you can see, you could also work with that or make them smaller, make them bigger. But as you have seen, it's going to be a matter of a few minutes to get to this final geometry and not going to take you hours and hours of drawing. Because the difficult operation, which is this conformal geometry around the scan, is done in an automated manner. And actually, let me throw a challenge at you. Uh, this is a bit of a hybrid automated manual workflow, but I am sure that it is possible to automate it even further. We can probably find a relationship between these reference geometries and the anatomy of the foot, of the leg. And probably we can find automated ways of repositioning and rescaling these geometries. So I invite you to join the anthropology community, try out our software, or if you're a user and you're working in the orthosis space, have a look at this workflow, which you can download from, from the link where you're watching this video. And think of ways in which this could be further automated. And please visit our website for more information about anthropology. You can access more resources like this video. If you go to the resources section, you have access to case studies, white papers, webinars, or more videos like this one with more applications coming up every week. And also, you can contact us. You can talk to our team 
and we can do a demo for you. You can try our software and see how it would fit in your application, in your business. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.